All right, so I put my uh, bat top joystick tops on there. They look really cool. I uh, found these online and I think they go great with uh, the cabinet. Um, but uh, I actually started putting buttons in before I put on the clear cover, uh, which is frustrating because the buttons are supposed to go through the clear cover also. So I had to take all the buttons for yellow and red that I put in, I had to take them all out to put the plastic cover on. And I noticed when I put the cover on it, it's pretty loose on the holes. So um, I decided to put two on each controller to kind of anchor the plastic on the top. That way when I lift it up, the plastic isn't sliding around. And uh, one note on your uh, joysticks, uh, if you lift up to the bottom and you look at it, You'll notice at the bottom of the joystick, it's got this little uh, flathead screw there, right here, a little flathead there. And that's to do a final tightening of the joystick itself. And if you don't do that, you might find when you're playing on the joystick, it starts to um, unscrew itself off of the actual shaft. Uh, so if you hold the bat top and just twist this little screw here, It'll give it a nice secure hold. All right, guys, so it is time to wire up this uh, arcade cabinet. And I am brand new to this, so if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I'm just going to walk through kind of what I've done here to figure this all out. I've wired players three and one already because I wanted to make sure I could do it right before getting some uh, before going over a video on how to do this side and sure enough I got it working all the buttons seem to be working uh, so now that I have an idea on how the buttons work I'm gonna walk through on this side kind of my process on how I did that but oh, the computer is detecting all the buttons uh, so I'm gonna walk through how to wire this all up here all right so you see the wiring um, and I'm using these Sanwa joysticks and what is called a mini pack, which is a small version of an eye pack, which is for a two player setup. The reason I went with this is because it's got this great harness that you just plug into it. So you don't have to wire each piece individually into the um, PCB itself, right? I also have these little PCB feet here that just screw on to the mini pack and that's the same for an eye pack and it's just a great way of securing it to the uh, wall of your console uh, so this saves a lot of time with this mini pack I've got two one for this side and one for that side uh, and there's two ways of doing this there's uh, each action button requires a ground and well I'll just say is the action wire right the one that actually sends the signal uh, and the action wire goes into usually the one in the middle um, and then the one on the outside is the ground. Uh, this one just has one input. This is all from Game Room Solutions. Sometimes there'll be two. So if there's two, the bottom one won't get anything. It'll be this middle one for the action button and then the one at the end is your ground. Um, and I connected those up. The one problem I found though is I have this these great Sanwa joysticks and they come with this little connector here and then you plug this into the PCB. That would have been great for an iPack 4 because you just would have plugged each end into the iPack. But you have this wiring harness which is really handy but now all the spots are filled. So I actually couldn't connect this wire to the mini pack because all the spots were covered by the wiring harness and the wires for this joystick aren't compatible with this type of connection so I actually couldn't use my Sanwa joystick with the mini pack as is in their standard formats uh, so I had to learn a little bit about electrical wiring did some research on the internet and learned about splicing like I said I'm all new to this uh, that you can actually splice wires together uh, so I snipped off the end of the um, Sanwa joystick cables uh, and then I uh, connected them to the ends 
of this wire using this, these little blue things here. So you just twist the wires together, you put this on, and it basically connects them into one wire. Uh, so I'll show you guys step by step how to do that when I do it on this side. But this one's all working. Uh, also by positioning this here, um, my computer is actually all the way down. Like I said, this cabinet is absolutely massive. So it's a long way. Obviously the little USB cord doesn't reach the computer down there. Uh, so I just bought some USB extenders that are connected to the computer inside. Those come up and you'll see that I just connected the mini pack to that USB connector which connects to the PC. Also, the Game Room Solutions large cabinet that I have has these two holes in the front here which are actually meant for additional USB cables, right? So you'd get a USB extender like this from your PC. You get a little attachment here, a little adapter that connects it here. So you've got these little USB ports and you can plug things in. I didn't particularly like that idea because I wouldn't want wires like sitting here when I'm trying to like play games and stuff like bumping up against me. So I didn't want to use those as USB ports. Uh, so I just got two little black buttons and I thought, hey, you know, I'll have some extra wires that are not being used on the mini pack. I'll just connect these buttons to the mini pack and just give myself some extra buttons to use, maybe as like a menu button or a home button, as long as I'm not bumping them while playing, which I shouldn't be the case. Because if I lower this, you'll see that the edge kind of sticks out. Uh, and there's this gap here, so you're not likely to bump it by accident because you'll hit here and you won't hit the button, so uh, it's kind of safe in that way. Um, but again, it was too short, right? These mini pack harness wires wouldn't reach all the way to here. Uh, so again, I had to do that splicing thing where I had some, got some wire uh, and spliced it to the end, and I just twisted those together uh, to basically extend the wires to make sure they would be long enough to kind of reach all the way to uh, these buttons here in the back and now I've got these two functioning buttons, but you'll see these buttons are different uh, They're actually simpler. They're not light buttons So you just have the action button on one side and then the ground button on the other side um, But so far the action buttons are working and I'll walk you through the process well, The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the little black twists uh, nuts on the buttons to hold them in place I'll go around and do each one of those and then we'll attach the micro switches to each So you notice that I had it leaning on me as I was twisting it to see both sides as I twisted it. And the reason for that is it's got this beautiful image that's stuck on here. So you just do an X here for the image. You just cut it with a, like a knife and then you can just stick the button right in. Um, but when I put the button in, sometimes it's shifted up or down and you can see the plastic underneath. So I want that completely covered. Uh, so I position it with my hand and then I twist on the black nut to make sure it looks on this side the way I want it to look. And it's just a simple right turn, clockwise turn, in order to twist these on, like the old righty tighty lefty loosey as they used to, as they say. And you'll notice on here that it's got two different kinds of ends. Uh, the one with the lip is what goes against the actual console. Uh, so you want it to go on with the lip up. Uh, you don't want it to go on with the lip down. It's a little tricky because this actually fits in the hole so it makes it look like that's probably how it's supposed to go. Um, but you want to twist it so the lip is on the top part as you twist it on. That one's got a little thing on it that's getting in the way. Yeah, it's got a little piece of plastic sticking out that's not allowing it to sit flush. Let me try and break that off. Okay, so there it is. 
all the buttons nice and tight. There we go. All right, so next step is going to be putting on these micro switches here. All right, so here's what the micro switch looks like when it's done. It's got three parts, the white part where that holds everything, the light, and the micro switch itself. And this is what it looks like to put it together. So you start with the white piece and the micro switch. You just got to figure out the right, right way to do it. It's got these little uh, points that stick out on here. It's got these little points that stick out on each end, and those are going to go in the holes of your micro switch like that with the orange button sticking up because that's what the button pushes on to activate the micro switch. So you just put that on the first hole, and then you're just going to stick it in there like that. And I need, I usually like push this back just a little bit because it gets stuck there. And I just kind of push it back in there like that so it goes. And then you just push it all the way on and it snaps into place. And that's on there. And this is going to be for my blue buttons. So I'm going to get my blue light and you see it's got the little uh, thing inside. It just drops right in there like that. Okay, so you just push it in there. goes just like that and it's put together and then that is what's going to connect to the actual button itself so if we take a look here so you take it like this and you're just going to put it in there like so and it's got this little um, groove right here uh, and it's going to hook onto the button. So there's going to be a part of the button that goes in there and then you twist it so it goes inside there. Uh, so you stick it on. There's a fun little piece of plastic in the button and then you just twist it onto it. But this is kind of frustrating. When you twist it to the right, it actually loosens this button you just tightened. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if that's just the way it is. So let me go and tighten this up again. Okay, get it tight. And I kind of turn the micro switch a little to the left first to tighten the button a little more. And then I twist it right to latch it into place and then it won't untighten because it's a little bit tighter. The hassle with that is it's hard to get the positioning just right. So you'll notice here where it's at, this might not work because when I try to stick this thing on, the micro switch for the next button is gonna be in the way. So you kind of want to tilt it away from the button, so you kind of have to finagle it a lot to get it to the point where it's positioned how you want. Uh, so I'm going to loosen this again. And this is what I found to be a hassle. Tighten it. I'm going to turn it to the left to tighten it a little more. No, that's probably not going to work because it'll be facing this one. I probably want it maybe there. Okay, so let's tighten that. Okay. Put it in, tighten it, and then turn it to the right to lock it into place. Oh, that might actually be okay. So you see that? So you kind of have to get tricky with it in order to get it positioned in a way where it won't be in the way of these other buttons that you're going to put into place. And that one's there. And then I'm going to just do that over and over again with all of these here.
So it looks like this button here is, has a pl piece of plastic inside that's twisted, so this one's not going on right. So I need to probably grab a different green button. I think I have an extra one. So they send one extra one, so hopefully there's no other ones that are faulty. Alright, so they're all on there. Got the green and the blue ones done. And now it, you'll notice it does that click here. The little blue, or it's got the little orange thing. And when you push the button, it pushes on that orange thing. That's how the micro switch works. And they're ready to go. Alright, so next thing I gotta do is take my micro my mini pack here i'm gonna attach the little feet onto it screw these into this end and to this end And there it is. Put my little feet on there. Now I just need to drill it into the wall here. And the way I position it on there is I have the um, micro USB connection up. I could have it down so that it's pointing towards the PC, but I don't want gravity to like pull it out as much. So I'd rather put it up high. I'm going to attach a little something to hold the wire and then it's going to come down and shorten zip, but my USB extenders are, are fine with that. And I just think it'll be more secure if I have it kind of pointing up that way. And there it is. It's all secure on there, screwed in. So this will be great. Nice secure hold here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is the joysticks. As I mentioned, those are a bit of a problem because I'm gonna have to splice the wires together. So right here is the harness. The black end just snaps right into the mini pack. And then you've got the individual wires here that go into each, uh, each button, right? Uh, basically, there's four little sections on here, J1, J2, J3, J4, that correspond to different buttons. So you just got to make sure you're plugging the wire, right wire, look at the diagram, and plug it into the right spot. And the black end is called the ground wire. Um, and every button, everything you connect has to be attached to uh, this black wire because everything that gets a current has to have a ground wire connected and we'll go through that But this is your ground wire uh, goes on the uh, J1 side. So we're gonna want that on the bottom here Given how I have it oriented on this thing There we go So it's got a nice snug fit with the uh, black ground wire on the bottom Okay, now I'm gonna have to check the diagram for what goes where. Now the other side of the mini pack that I have open is for a trackball and a spinner. Um, I have a trackball that I'm gonna attach, but that's gonna plug directly into the PC using a USB. So it doesn't need to connect to the, the mini pack. So these top four wires are gonna connect to this joystick. And then the top four wires under J2 are going to connect to this joystick. Um, but you'll notice it's got these ends that don't plug in to that, right? So I can't plug it straight in. That's why I'm going to need to splice these wires together. And so here is the wire for the uh, joystick, the one that came with the Sanwa joystick. And you'll notice the tips 
would plug in just fine to an IPAC 4 because it does IPAC 4 doesn't have a wiring harness. But since I have a wiring harness, I can't just plug these right into there, right? There's no slot. Now, I thought you could take a wire out and replace it, but you actually need like a little rectangle thing that connects here, which goes in there. So that didn't work. So I just decided to splice them together, which worked just fine. So I'm gonna have to cut this wire and cut the correct wires on here. And then I'm gonna connect them to make one wire so they plug into each other like that. So I'm gonna plug this one in here. because This is how it connects. There we go. That's on there. And now each one of these wires correspond with up, down, left, right. And each one of these correspond with up, down, left, right. Uh, so I have to find the up on here and the up on here and put them together. And I've got these little diagrams to look at. Uh, this one here is for the joystick. It'll tell me which one is up on here. And then this one over here is for the mini pack. It'll tell me which one is up on here. So I grab up here, up here, and I'm going to splice them together. Well, let me go ahead and snip these first. Uh, looks like it doesn't have to be... I don't want a lot of excess cords, so I gonna cut off most of this. I just need it to connect to the mini pack here. So maybe just cut it right there and that'll connect onto there. That should be good. I'm gonna get my wire cutters on here. I'm gonna just cut off this bundle here of wiring. And there it goes. It's gone. So I sure hope I'm doing this right. So I get that out of here. And I need to find, uh, so on here, up is gonna be red on here. If we look over here for player one, up is going to be blue. So one up is blue. So we want the red and the blue to go together. And let me just confirm that's how I had it over here. So, Huh. Yeah, the way I had it oriented on this one is the plug was on the right hand side, so it had a different orientation on here. Now though, the plug is on uh, this side, so that's why it's gonna be a different color. So the colors are gonna be different on here than it was for this joystick over here because it's oriented differently. So I'm just gonna go off this. So red on here is up and blue on here is up. So I need to connect red and blue together. So there's the blue right there. And the red and those two are gonna to go together. Okay, so I need to snip this one off because that's not gonna connect on there. So I need to take off this little thing like that. So I don't need that. And now I just need to connect these red and blue wires together uh, in order to make one wire. So the way we do that, if we get our little wire stripper here and we're gonna strip off at the end of the wire like that, okay. Now we're going to strip off the end of this blue one, which is up as well. There we go. And now we've exposed the wires right like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put those two together. Make sure your power is off. There's not a lot of voltage in these things, but still be careful. We're going to push them together and just twist them together like that. See that? You just twist them together like so. And now they're one wire and then you get the little blue cap and you just stick it right on there like this. And these are pretty cool. You just twist it on and it makes a nice secure hold and you just twist until it feels like it doesn't really twist anymore. And it doesn't come off and you now have one wire. So the up on here is now connected to the up on here, okay?
Next is going to be the black, which is your ground. Now everything is going to go on the same ground wire, uh, so that'll be later. Uh, I'll do the ground wire after I connect all the action wires. But now we've got a joystick that is connected to our mini pack. Uh, and you just spliced them together to make them into one wire. All right, so there we go. I got the other joystick connected now. Did it the same way as that one. Just cut it shorter. Uh, this was going to be the player two one. So that's J2 joystick two. And I looked at the diagram, matched up the wires for up, down, left, and right, spliced them together, and there you go. And as you can see, we got the black ground wires still unconnected for each of these. Those will connect to uh, the ground wire of all the buttons also when we get to that step.